if you're trying to extend the battery life of your Internet of Things project and you happen to be using an ESP32 development board, then deep sleep modes can be the best method for that. In this video, I'm going to show you the absolute minimum code you need to get your ESP32 into deep sleep using a timer wake up. It's literally two lines of code. And the amount of power you can save by putting your ESP32 into deep sleep is kind of nuts. Let's jump into this. Now, just in case you don't believe me, here's a little chart uh, from the ESP32 data sheet. I kind of just collated some of the information together here. But basically, uh, there's different modes that the ESP32 can be in. Um, an active mode, a modem sleep mode, and then a deep sleep mode. There's also other modes. I didn't include those because they didn't seem as pertinent to me. Anyhow, when you're in the active mode, that's like your Bluetooth is running, your Wi-Fi is running, and you can be using anywhere from 95 to 240 milliamps. That's all systems go, like, use it all up, now's the time. It's like a battleship in the middle of a war. It's just going nuts, lots of energy. Okay, and then you've got the modem sleep mode, and that's when your CPU is operational, but the uh, you're not using the RF antenna. I call that radio silence. I think of like Red October. If you haven't seen that movie, you should pause now and watch that. Uh, but it's about like a submarine that's anyway. Uh, so then in that, you're using 20 to 68 milliamps, which is still quite a gain when you've got your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth disabled. And then you've got deep sleep, which is a whole nother game. The ESP32 starts using this ultra low power processor. And now you're talking about using 10 microamps to 150 microamps. Talk about a game changer for you know power consumption. So in deep sleep, I call that like enter Sandman mode. You know, you're you're out. It's you're not gonna be doing anything here. There are a couple of things that do keep running. For example, the real-time clock can still work and some timers can work. In fact, in this lesson, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use a timer to wake this up. If you wanna check out some more of the specifics here, I'll link to this uh, article we have on our website in the description. So now I just wanna take a quick moment and talk about code flow, cause it's just sort of weird, but once you kinda of like get the idea of it, it's not so crazy. Anyway, okay, so think of an Arduino program, right? You've got setup and you've got loop, setup runs once and then the loop goes over and over and over, right? Well, check out this program. Generally, you think of your code going into loop, right? Like the stuff you wanna do happens in the loop. Well, in this case, the stuff you wanna do is gonna happen in setup. And in fact, the stuff you wanna do, like the stuff that you're writing your program to do, maybe it's gonna read some sensor data and then transmit that um, over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or you know whatever it's gonna do, all that, you're gonna to wanna to take care of that as the first bit of code in your setup, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna set a wake up source for getting out of deep sleep. Now the wake up source can be a timer or it can be one of these touch pins that they have on ESP32s, or it can be an, like an external event that happens. In this video, we're gonna just talk about the timer. Basically, what we're gonna do is just set an interval, and that interval determines when the ESP32 will wake up out of its deep sleep. All right, so you do what you need to do, you set a wake up source, and then you prepare for sleep. And this is kind of like housekeeping stuff. So what you need to do, let's say you make a connection to a Wi-Fi client or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to close that connection. Maybe you're talking to something over like an additional serial connection, you wanna shut that serial connection down. Like you just do your housekeeping stuff, close up shop, right? And then finally, you enable sleep. So once you enable sleep, this puppy goes to bed. Like loop never gets executed, nothing happens here. And then what happens is when that wake up signal is identified, and in this case, it's gonna be that timer, right? So that timer is gonna be running in the background. Then the ESP32 is going to essentially like reset. It's gonna come back on and it's gonna start at the top of your code again. So it's gonna start back up at setup. You're gonna do what you need to do, set the wake up source again, prepare for sleep, and then enable sleep. Like that's just gonna happen over and over and over. Now it doesn't, it's not exactly like pressing the reset button, but like functionally speaking, it kind of is. Now I do wanna know, I know I'm showing that the, you start right here at setup, but you would start at like the top of your sketch, right? So if, if you had some variable set above setup, that's, that's where you'd start, but hopefully you get the idea there. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into the Arduino IDE. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you the absolute minimum code 
in order to put your ESP32 to sleep and have it wake up. It's going to be two lines of code, and it's going to be setting a wake up source and then enabling deep sleep. And then what we'll do is add some utility functions to make it a little easier to read and maintain. And that's about it. All right, so let's do this. All right, so here I am in the Arduino IDE. This is just a blank sketch. And I'm just going to uh, write out some comments here real quick. Okay, so these are kind of like the four steps that we talked about, right? So you do what you need to do, then you set a wake-up source, do some housekeeping, prepare for sleep, and then you enable sleep. So let's start with this set wake-up source. Okay, so the function ESP sleep enable wake up timer is what is going to set the wake up mode for this deep sleep. Now, what's sort of interesting about this function is that the value it accepts is in microseconds. That's the interval, right, that it's going to wake it up at. So a microsecond is one millionth of a second. So if you wanted to sleep for two seconds, you know, you'd enter the number two million here. So like if this function got in a fight with Bruce Lee, like reaction time wise, I, I think it'd be pretty close. This is pretty, you know, precise or whatever. Bruce Lee, though, I'd probably win. Anyway, all right. So ESP sleep enable timer mode. So this means right now that when I put this thing to sleep every second, it's going to wake back up. Okay, now let's go ahead and enable sleep. All right, ESP deep sleep start. Okay, we're done. Is that crazy? Two lines of code. We put this thing into deep sleep and we just saved a ton of power. So let's just talk through this real quick again. You plug your ESP32 in, you upload this code, you know, it starts at the top of the program, it hits setup, it sets the wake up source using the ESP sleep enable timer wake up, and then it just goes into deep sleep. Everything starts powering down and now it's, it's out, like the loop never runs. So it's out. But in the background, there's a timer running. And when the timer reaches that amount, which is in this case, one second, the board wakes up again. And for all intents and purposes, it's a lot like pressing the reset button. And then we start back up at setup. We enable the sleep timer. See what I'm saying? Like that, that's how this rolls. And these are just the two lines of code you need. But obviously here, we're not really doing too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more code here and then we'll kind of talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about what I did. I added some variables up here at the top and a couple more functions down here. Okay, so the first thing I did is just this little convenience code right up here. Okay, so I say time to sleep. So this is like in seconds, it basically is what I'm trying to... So I'm saying, okay, I actually want the device to sleep for five seconds. And then I create a little conversion factor, microsecond to second. And basically what this allows me to do is I can just multiply time to sleep times that factor so I can write something that makes more sense. I'm not writing like all those zeros or whatever. So that's what I just put down here in the ESP sleep enable wake up timer. So we've got time to sleep, which is in seconds times that conversion factor and that, that gives us seconds. You can do whatever conversion factor you want. You'll notice this is a really big data type. And the idea is that, you know, this could be a really long number. Now, one thing I didn't mention before and, you know, just real quick aside here, there's like a lot of details that I'm leaving out here. Uh, some of those details, if you check out the description, we've got a, an entire article on this. Uh, some of those details will be there, but um, there's definitely more, more stuff going on here. But with this function, the longest amount of time, like, I don't know what that is. I'm trying to figure that out. If you know what time that is, let me know in the comments. I know based on what I could gather from the interwebs, it's like, at least 12 hours. That's a pretty long time to put this thing to sleep. 
There's also a minimum time. I don't exactly know what that minimum time is either. If you put in too small of a time here, then your ESP deep sleep start function might actually uh, fail, like it might not be able to go into deep sleep and it will return an error code. I don't know how short that is. I imagine it's like you're talking you know, a matter of uh, microseconds there, but okay, anyhow. All right, so that's what this is. This is just a convenience factor right here. Okay, so the other thing I did is I wanted to add some code just to demonstrate like, hey, what are we doing? And I'm not really doing much. I'm starting serial communication, and then I'm incrementing boot count. So this value right here, boot count, I want to basically say like, how many times have we woken up? Like I plug my ESP32 into power, and then I want to know how many times has it rebooted, you know, woken up from sleep, essentially. Okay, so this boot count variable, you'll notice I've got it up top. It's an integer. I set it equal to zero. You'll notice this funky thing right here. Okay, so basically when you, this is the real-time clock, RTC, real-time clock data. And basically what this allows you to do is save the value of this variable into the real-time clock memory. Because when the ESP32 goes to sleep, all of the values you will have stored in your program will be lost. They'll be wiped. They'll be cleared. So we can't increment boot count here and expect it to retain that value when the program wakes up from deep sleep. So the way around that is just to use this RTC data ATTR. It saves it into that RTC memory so it can persist from one wake up to the next. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, so we increment boot count and then I just print some stuff out. So like, hey, what's the boot number? So I just print this value to the serial monitor and then I say, all right, we're going to sleep. Okay, so this is kind of like what I need to do. Maybe what you need to do is like read some sensor values and then you need to open a Wi-Fi connection or a Bluetooth, you know, scan or something like that. And whatever you got to do, you do that here. Okay, so then we're setting the wake up source, nothing new there. So then for the prepare for sleep, I just want to demonstrate something. So I'm using the flush function from the serial library. And what this function does is it holds the program in place until all of the data that's in the serial buffer has been sent. So a little bit of details there that I won't get into because it's just not important. I just want you to know that like, this is the place where you want to prepare for sleep. So if, if you've got some other peripherals that you're talking to, you're going to want to like close those connections, like time to clean up shop, right? Okay, and then we go to sleep. So let me go ahead and upload this code. And by the way, I'm using an ESP32 Vroom dev model. Really doesn't matter what ESP32 you're using, this code should work. And you know, another interesting point about this, notice there's no library to include. It's not like this is some additional functionality that you have to pull from a library. It's just kind of built right in with the ESP32 core that you need to upload when you're working with an ESP32 with the Arduino IDE. And we've got videos about getting that set up, so maybe we can link to those in the description as well if you're wondering. Okay, so now we've got this thing loaded. Actually, let me, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the uh, serial monitor here. Let's pull this up and let's see. Okay, so let's see, right now we're on boot number five. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna reset the board. Let's see if, let's see if I'm gonna reset it. And uh, actually, let me clear that, reset. Okay, so now we're on boot number two, should be five seconds. Boot three, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Bam, there it is. It's like Bruce Lee timing, it's amazing. All right, so the next video you're gonna wanna watch is this Arduino in 90 minutes video. It is gonna get you up and running, learning how to program Arduino. Tons of folks have said it's been super helpful for getting them started or filling in gaps. So this video right here, just click on it. I think you're gonna find it super helpful.